I have a motion and a second to consider action item 52. I move to approve the notice of revocation for Franklin Town Charter High School. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Board members, any questions or discussion on action item 52? I wanted to make a comment, board president. Yes. Um, if, it, if it is proven that the people who did this egregious um, thing by cherry picking students um, and they're gone, I don't see why there should be a penalty to the other students and, 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 and staff that had nothing to do with this. Um, it's easy to be the, when the blue ribbon, when you pick in the blue ribbon student, but if they are doing what they're going to say, which is to go through, um, not their own lottery system, but an established lottery system, you know, we'll see. Will you still remain blue ribbon when you take everybody, when you take students from all the zip codes? If so, then you just got a dynamite staff. Um, but I think the actual people should be dealt with, um, especially if, it, if, it, if this violates any legal things and not the entire school. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Thompson. Board Member Sally. President Streeter, are you aware um, of any attempts from the new administration at Franklin Town um, to reach out in any matter to us as a body um, since they're coming on board? There were several of the staff that, their staff that talked about they've had changes, I think, since the spring of 2023. And I'm just wondering, since that time period, are you aware of any attempt for them to reach us as a body? I don't know if there's been an attempt to reach us as a body. I believe there was a letter um, from the school earlier on, but since then, I don't believe there was any. Under the new administration or the prior administration? I'm not, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I know it's very short to the time when the article came out. Yes. Where we got a letter um, from, okay. from them, but nothing since. Um, sure. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Board Member Lamb. Um, responding to Board Member Sally, or sorry, Board Member Thompson's comment, I think it's difficult to ascertain whether the violations that were uncovered um, are indicative of something more pervasive in the culture or um, makeup of the school, and not specifically pointing to any individual staff member, but something more pervasive as opposed to the direct result of a few individuals acting alone. Um, I see the revocation process as a process where we can get more information about what led to these um, this practice, whether it can more easily be isolated and removed from this school, or whether um, it is something that would require a much greater um, change in order to, um, to deal with. I also, I also believe that these practices are, I mean, it's, it's analogous to cheating and it's illegal and the, it brings to question the legitimacy of the data and the achievements that the entire staff has worked really hard to show and it would be unfair to not learn more about what was at the root of what was uncovered. Vice President Fix Lopez. Yeah, thank you. One of this, um, and thank you for, for that, Board Member Lamb. I think in, in a revocation, if, if approved tonight, would lead to a hearing process that could potentially bring more of that out is what I'm understanding. Um, but I think one of the things that I, I continue to go back to is, what does the law allow us to do in the charter space? The governance of district operated schools and the governance of charter operated schools legally is different. And we've heard the charter school's office um, consistently kind of help us remind us of that law. If there's like really one tool in the toolbox, right? You renew or you non-renew. And in egregious situations, you have a revocation 
you know, lever that you could pull. And so when I think of those options on the table um, and with the egregious data that we saw and the absolute blatant racist practice that is clearly happening, I do want to know more about is this a pervasive issue that goes well beyond this? It also does make me think, is this pervasive throughout the city and other charter schools? And is this going to now, you know, I do think it's a best practice to audit everything that we do. And a part of that it would be auditing, we're auditing our own lottery system, right? And auditing, you know, auditing this across the both sectors. Um, thank you. You know, as I think about this, the other piece I heard the staff talk about was the board of the charter. And I think there's a level of responsibility. I know we have as a board um, about ensuring that not only quality education is provided for our children, right, but that there's certain ethical things that we have to do as a board. So for me, I'm kind of where um, the other board members are in terms of the revocation giving us an opportunity to learn more. You know, is there an opportunity to turn this around? Um, and seriously stick to it because in the past there have been discussions about it and it didn't change. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to, um, I think that the work that the teachers have done or the educators have done is incredible work. It's not something that I want to throw out, you know, the baby with the bathwater, but I think it's something that's serious enough that we have to do something about it. Or maybe Dancy. Yeah. Uh, Yes, they are good academically. Yes, uh, our students there would be impacted if, you know, we ended up terminating their contract. But the bottom line is, is that what they are doing, and it's a culture, because this was in 2014, issues of this type were cited. And it has continued. And I almost feel that this system came into play once we put in that, hey, you can't do what you're doing uh, in terms of how you're doing your uh, lottery and those kind of things. And so I feel that we would be doing that school a disservice if we did not take some actions. And as someone said, to determine whether or not this is an isolated thing with one person, which kind of seems hard to me because I could kind of feel if I was walking around that school, I would be able to say something is wrong here. You know what I mean? But given that that's our course for revocation before anything else, I I am in for I am favorite because of the fact that we can't say that, especially when we hammer on about our black and brown students, we cannot then let that go by when we know some of our black and brown students are being denied opportunities. We've had enough denials. And so uh, I think we should move forward. Board Member Sally. I just want to add and, and, and build what I know um, Board Member Mallory mentioned, right, that the audit or the discipline of auditing, even us looking at within the school district, the audit of the lottery system, I want to point out that the practice there is a third party independent audit as well on which the practice so i think the other positive about the revocation process is it forces us to look at the entire process what we knew in 2014 did we understand the extent of the problem it goes back to has our own assurance worked and what types of objective evidence were identified so not only do we look at the school itself but i think it gives us an opportunity to look at the practices of the the office the charter school office everything involved and so it in itself becomes a holistic approach, which should not be denied, given the seriousness of all of this. Ms. Rao, please call the roll. Thank you, President Streeter. Um, board members, a motion has been made and seconded to approve the notice of revocation for Franklin Town Charter High School. When I call your name, either vote yes if you're voting to approve the notice of revocation for Franklin Town Charter High School or vote no. Ms. Wilkerson. Yes. Ms. Thompson. No. Oh, I'm sorry. My vote is no. 
Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't thank, hear you well. Thank you, Board Member Tom. Thank you. Um, President Streeter. Yes. Ms. Sally. Yes. Vice President Fix Lopez. Yes. Ms. Lamb. Yes. Ms. Ahaya Hinton. Yes. Ms. Danzi. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Thank you. The um, motion passes on action item 52 by a vote of eight in favor and one opposed. And I have a, some comments I would like to say. Um, any action um, this board takes is not a result of the performance of Franklin Town Charter School. Rather, it is about how the school is conducting its admission process and lottery. This is not a decision that we take lightly as a board. We understand the impact tonight's decision on Franklin Town Charter High School's existing student, family, staff, and entire school community, and the entire school community. This decision is about ensuring that the school and its leaders are complying with required laws and regulations as well as their charter to implement a fair and equitable admission and lottery process that allows any student from any part of the city to have an equal opportunity to access public education. It is our duty and our responsibility as authorizers to hold charter schools accountable under established standards and providing access to all students and access with applicable laws. Discriminatory conduct, if verified, undermines the collective ability of the board and the public to have faith in, a, in the system of accountability that we have established. If a charter school is picking and choosing which students to enroll, the credibility of the subsequent successes of that charter school could potentially be called into question. We have to wrestle with these principles. To that end, I want to reiterate, reiterate again that tonight's decision is incredibly difficult for this board. While we must hold schools accountable, the charter school law provides us with limited options, revocation or non-renewal. I acknowledge and understand that a decision to revoke the charter by this board would have an unintended impact on the schools who have been currently enrolled. So this on the students who are, who, who are currently enrolled. I also understand that recently the school's new leadership has taken some steps to begin to address and correct previous wrongdoings. However, more must be done to remedy this situation to ensure that future students and applicants have an equal and fair opportunity to access Franklin Town Charter High School. All, right. all options are on the table, from revocation all the way on to, down to non-revocation. Through this process, our goal is to understand the facts and make a determination in the best interest of students. Again, I'm going to say that again. This is generally, I believe, how we, uh, we operate uh, as it relates to charter schools, our, our intent. Through this process, our goal is to understand the facts and make a determination in the best interest of students. In order to do that, we must hold the school accountable and find a remedy while also considering the impact of our actions on the school community. We will do our duty to balance these interests and make the best decision that we can. Okay. Thank you. The board will now, we will now begin voting on a consent agenda for the remaining action items, which are items 1-1.